Hey guys, what's going on? Blame back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about 13 the Musical. Thirteen the Musical is an American musical film based on the Broadway production of the same name, and tells the story of Evan Goldman, a Jewish middle school student about to reach 13 years of age. He plans to host a bar mitzvah party to celebrate, but his plans are disrupted when he's forced to move from New York to Indiana in the wake of his parents' divorce. After settling in, he begins making friends and adjusting to his new life. He becomes determined once again to host a memorable bar mitzvah, though this proves more difficult than expected, as he has to navigate his way through complex social circles at his new school. I don't know anything about the original Broadway play, so I can't say if this is a faithful adaptation or not, but for me it ended up being the definition of average. It's definitely not bad as far as being family entertainment goes, but it's so bland and unremarkable that it's not really worth discussing much at length. The actor who plays Evan did a good job in his role. His character is sympathetic on account of many factors, having moved to a new area, needing to make new friends, and his parents separating, so the amount of issues he has does make it easier for the audience to relate to him on some level. As a character in general, though, there's not much else to say. The only other notable trait is his Jewish heritage, which was cool to see as he balances his faith with the desires for his party, but otherwise he goes through the motions of being the new guy the same way as pretty much any other new guy has done in similar movies. Most of the other characters are fine, if lacking in memorability. Evan's new best friend Patrice was a good counterpart for him, although I thought it was weird with how much of a grudge he has toward the cool kids at the school, even though they didn't seem all that bad. There's only one character in the group that could be considered bad, in the form of Lucy. She has a secret crush on a guy named Brett, who is actually attracted to Kendra, and she tries to scheme her way into kissing him before she does. Some of her scenes are amusing, but in the end I wasn't drawn that much into her arc. The best characters in this movie are the ones that I felt were underused in terms of their comedic talent. Josh Peck and Rhea Perlman make memorable appearances as Evan's rabbi and grandmother respectively, and give good moral lessons for him to follow, while also having some of the funniest lines. However, it's Evan's paraplegic neighbor Archie who easily steals the show. Every single line that comes out of his mouth is great, and the subplot where he tries to strike up a romance with Kendra before Brett, while a bit weird at times, was a lot more notable than Lucy's scheme. In the end though, most of this movie's characters lack any sort of real distinguishing traits or personality. They almost feel like cheap knockoffs of characters from similar musicals like High School Musical, right up to the family-friendly presentation attached to its teenage cast. That was probably what disappointed me the most about this movie. Everything about its content feels sanitized in its approach, which I guess is fine for a family movie, but it's the most basic kind of coming of age story that someone could possibly tell. For a movie about teenagers, it feels like it would appeal more to elementary school children. Various teen issues are examined like having crushes, fitting in with social groups, and competing with others. These are things that pretty much everyone has or had to deal with as a teenager, so without having any sort of unique drama to catch interest, it becomes boring to sit through. Now it's not necessarily that these issues are bad and that they shouldn't be featured at all, there are some some scenes that are somewhat intriguing when these issues pop up, it's just that because they're all examined at surface level, there's not much reason to care about what the characters go through beyond a general sense. The movie being a musical does help a little bit with making it more compelling to watch. There's about a dozen songs to this movie's soundtrack, which are all okay for the plot, even if they're not exactly noteworthy. What I like about the music is that it balances well with the story. The movie isn't constantly playing one track after the next, with a song usually playing every 10 minutes or so. This gives time for the story to breathe, and for the audience to take a break from the flashy song numbers, which I appreciate. The production quality and dance choreography for the songs are pretty top-notch if I say so myself. It's clear that a lot of work went into the visual presentation of the songs, and it's great to see so many moving parts being pulled off successfully. It all helps make the songs stand out more. And as it turns out, the movie needs all the help it can get when it comes to its music, because the music by itself is just as generic as the characters. The songs sound almost identical to each other and don't have any sort of catchy hook or beat. There was one song I enjoyed, which was the opportunity opportunity track led by Lucy, but other than that, that's it. There's a few times during the songs as well where tonal shifts can occur, usually whenever there's breaks in the middle of a track. The opening song is especially guilty of this, as Evan is singing and dancing happily to his heart's content, only to be intercut between scenes of him arguing with his parents and being sad about moving away, which was pretty jarring to say the least. If it hadn't been for the planning of the bar mitzvah, this would have been hard to tell apart from any other average Disney production. It's the one big thing that Evan hinges on throughout the movie, so this does generate some suspense as he tries to make it a success while overcoming setbacks along the way. I liked seeing how excited Evan is for the bar mitzvah, and he does make an effort to prepare for it both in and outside of religious context, but the drama surrounding it feels exaggerated, sometimes unwarranted, and the payoff without spoiling anything left a lot to be desired. The movie takes a very safe and trivial 
approach to addressing adolescence and Evan's journey to becoming a man. He learns all of the moral lessons one would expect, from apologizing when you've done wrong to knowing who your real friends are. These aren't bad messages, but the lack of originality is really disappointing. Overall, 13 the Musical is a mediocre family musical that is about as average as average can get for the genre. If you like musicals and you want to watch one that's fun for the whole family without much deeper thinking involved, you might enjoy this to some extent. Everything about it is competent and it's fun in part, so it may have just lost something from the original Broadway play along the way, but as a whole, it doesn't do much to highlight the struggles of being 13 that others don't know already. What did you think about this movie? Did you think it was a worthy adaptation, or does it fall short in comparison to the original? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of 13 the Musical. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the Spanish spy thriller, Codename Emperor. Bye bye!